Welcome back. You're listening to Get Real with Bob and Stacy. You're joining us for our Leaders and Legends segment, and our guest today is Dr. Mark Goulston. Mark is an advisor to entrepreneurs, an FBI hostage negotiation trainer, and an author. Welcome to the show, Mark. I'm glad to be here. You know, I grew up outside of Boston, so you can call me Mac. <laughs> yes, we probably will anyways. <laughs> yes, we will. <laughs> so I'm excited to have Mark on the show. This is like one of the most exciting interviews we've had in a long time. Yes. Mark is a former crisis psychiatrist, FBI and police hostage negotiation trainer, and a UCLA professor. He's one of the world's foremost experts on empath- empathic. Is that am I saying empathic? that? Empathic. Empathic? Empathic. Yeah, Empathic. we'll see if we can get past the bio. <laughs> uh, Empathic Listening and is author of, holy cow, seven books. His book, Just Listen, Discover the Secret to Getting Through to Absolutely Anyone, became the top book on listening in the world. And his recent book, which I'm downloading right now, Talking to Crazy, How to Deal with the Irrational and Impossible People in Your Life, was featured on the Oprah book site, was a finalist in the Audible Book Oscars. And reached number one in four business categories on Amazon. By the way, anybody listening to the live program uh, this weekend, you can download these books on sale uh, on Kindle, Talking to Crazy for $1.99 and Just Listen for $2.99. So Mark is a confidant and key advisor to entrepreneurs, founders, and CEOs on any and all interpersonal matters. So sounds like you're an expert in helping people get through to anyone. Tell us about that. Well, um, what I've discovered is that uh, that one of the things that keeps us from getting through to people is often people can turn into knuckleheads. And when they turn into knuckleheads, they drive us crazy. And when they drive us crazy, they react, we react, and, uh, and it escalates. And so my book, Just Listen, was about how do you listen into people. Uh, and my book, Talking to Crazy, is how do you listen into people and then lean into them and disarm them. So I'll give you an example. If I was listening to you versus listening into you, if I'm listening to you, uh, I, I would be answering the questions just in a sort of the way I'm answering them. Here's an example of listening into you, and you can each tell me what the difference is. If I'm listening into you, uh, what I'm picking up is that it's very important for you to bring important immediately usable information to your listeners that they can use today. It's also important that you bring on experts that do that. And I'm guessing that there's sometimes you have experts on and you look at each other and you say, we can't put this on the air. Yes. That actually <laughs> happens. This person was yeah. awful. We've got to protect our audience. And how do we explain to their PR person we can't use the interview? So is any of that true? Oh, oh God, absolutely. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And so can you see the difference? One was listening to you and the other one was listening into you. And that's why you uh, you kind of opened up, and I and uh, and I know you know that you you have a great show, and the people who listen in want some immediately usable tips. And uh, and one tip that I use when I talk to audiences about how do you get through to people uh, who object to things, and you know, and they know that you have the solution to their problem. Uh, uh, they know it, you know it. Uh, you ask them if they have any other questions. And uh, you answer them, and then they say, well, let me sort of think about it. And two-thirds of the time, let me think about it means no. So I'm sure some of your listeners have been there. I'm I'm sure uh, each of you have been there. Mm -hmm. Is that true? Mm -hmm. Absolutely, yes. So logical listening, listening to them is, do you have any objections? Is there anything else that we haven't covered? Here's empathic listening. But you have to find your own style. You've got to realize that I'm a shrink. I'm a hostage negotiation trainer. So, you know, you've got to adapt it to yourself. But if you're running into someone like that and they're pausing and you know they have no questions and you know that you have a solution, what you might say to them is, uh, can I ask you a hypothetical question? Hmm. And I look at you puzzled. Yeah. And you say to them, you've been disappointed before. And you don't want to repeat that disappointment because we've all been disappointed before. And I'm guessing that what you've heard from us may feel or sound similar to a situation that you said yes to, and it didn't work out well. And so you're pausing because you just don't want to repeat that again because you're just like all of us. Is any of that true? So can you see how Hmm. you've, by tuning into them, If logically there's no reason for them to hold back, they're holding back because they don't want to repeat 
an experience that they've had that afterwards they said to themselves, what was I thinking? Why did I do that? Yes. So can you see how that, that's empathic listening? This is, yes, this is amazing. Like in, I look at the book, Talk to Crazy, and do you offer any advice? I have a handful of people. I have one particular real estate agent who does not work at my company, somebody that I've tried to recruit for many years to my company, but we have a friendship that is so contentious because he's crazy. And then I look at it, I'm like, (laughs) maybe I'm the crazy one. Like, how do you, how can somebody decipher whether the other person is the nut or you're the end (laughs) nut? Well, that's a, uh, there's a big chapter on talking to crazy, uh, uh, because uh, people have said to me, what if you're the nut? Yes. So it, 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 it's a way of figuring it out. And, I, and here's what it is. If you're the person who takes things personally when they're not meant that way, hmm. who misinterprets what the other person is saying, uh, who the other person has to say, can you calm down, mm-hmm. uh, then you're probably the crazy person. But if you're dealing with be. someone, <laughs> uh, if you're not the crazy person, but they are, and mm-hmm. again, I'm a psychiatrist, mm-hmm. and and this is, I'm not talking about mental illness. Yeah. I'm talking about the people that drive you crazy. Right. Yeah. And I need to say that because I was a practicing psychiatrist for 30 years, working with schizophrenics, manic mm-hmm. depressive, and I was a big suicide specialist, talked people out of killing themselves for 20 years. And uh, <clears throat> and so here's what you might say to someone, and, th- and you'll see how this is very disarming. And it's what I call uh, uh, assertive humility it's a way of bearing your neck to the other person mm-hmm. uh, which disarm you know when animals bear their neck uh, their mm-hmm. predators uh, are disarmed so you say to this person um, you say when would you have a few minutes because i need your help with something nice uh, hmm. and uh and and they're going to say what you could say yeah no it's it's not urgent but when would you have a few minutes so you want to get their imagination going and because you're bearing your neck into them. And then when, when you speak to them, say, I need your help with something because you're incredibly talented. And I find myself close to dreading talking to you. And I need to look forward to talking to you. That's awesome. And I'm, and I'm having trouble with that. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And you're so talented. And I'm having trouble with that because when our conversations happen... And they go sideways, and it could be me, it could be you. And, and what you don't know is that I think what you do is you remind me of difficult people in my past. You know? and, 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 and suddenly I'm, I'm feeling all these kinds of things towards you, and it's probably aimed at people in my past who used to do that. And so I, I want to build on what we have and make sure that your talent sees the light of day, and I can't do it without you. That makes sense. That's amazing. Yes. yes. So let's take it to, especially in our business, or probably any business, like occasionally you get a customer who calls and they're like just furious. They're steaming. You can feel their anger coming from the other side of the phone. How do you take steps to de-escalate that situation? Well, th- there's something that I call the Fuden technique. And Fuden stands for frustrated, upset, disappointed, now what? Frustrated, right. upset, disappointed, now what? And so what you do is when they're screaming, um, you, you let them finish, mm-hmm. and, you, uh, and, then, and then you pause, and, and you don't want to say you sound angry or calm down because that will just agitate them. And, and, but everyone will talk about being frustrated because mm-hmm. everybody's frustrated, and you pause. And this is what you say. You know, if I was you right now, I'd be, I'd be frustrated and really upset. Can you tell me what you're frustrated and really upset about? Hmm. And so by saying it that way, you're not, you're not talking down to them. You're saying that if you, you're picking up, if I was you right now, I'd be frustrated and upset about something. Can you tell me specifically what that is? Because mm-hmm. we'd like to fix that. And so when you, when you do that and people start telling you, well, I'm really frustrated about this, I'm upset about this, you're going to, hear their voice calm down because there's research that shows that when people uh, use the right word for what they're feeling, their feelings calm down. And so you're giving them the words instead of saying, you, 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 you're getting them to say, well, I'm really frustrated about this. and I'm really upset about this. And then there's something that I suggest to people. uh, 
uh, who really want to, you know, some people say this is this is amazing stuff. So I, I suggest to people, uh, when people are talking to you and they're upset, notice four things. Notice hyperbole. So if they use words like awful, horrendous, terrible, notice that. Or notice inflection, you know, uh, we've got to take care of this. You know, you can't keep doing this to me. So when they raise their voice, that's inflection. And people who really love this stuff, uh, notice adverbs and adjectives, because an adverb embellishes a verb, and an adjective embellishes a noun. And all four of those things, hyperbole, inflection, uh, adverbs, and adjectives, have emotional juice on them. So when the person's talking to you about what they're frustrated and upset about, and they say, this is really horrendous, and such and such and such and such, they're going to expect you to say, now calm down. And so from the talking to crazy standpoint, you lean in, and you say, say more about the horrendous. Mm-hmm. Well, say more about the awful. And what's going to happen mm-hmm. is you're, going to, you're giving them that word, they're going to start calming down. And then, uh, and then what you do, uh, and you use the I word, which calms people down, which is important, because most people who are upset feel unimportant. And what you say is, this is much too important for me to not really got what, get what you said. So what you said you were frustrated about is this. What you said you were upset about is this. Is that correct? And the reason you're doing that is because you're forcing them to listen, which calms them down more. And then when they tell you what that is, you say, you know, if I was you right now, I'd really be disappointed. What are you disapp- disappointed about specifically? You know, disappointed in my company, disappointed in me, disappointed in the deal, disappointed in yourself. And there's something magical about the, someone saying, I was disappointed about this. It's a very calming an expressive emotion. And then again, you say, okay, this is really important. Uh, i got to review it. You were frustrated about this. You were upset about this. And you were disappointed about this. Is that correct? And they say yes. So that's the first time you've drawn a yes out of them, and they're connecting to you. And then you say, given that some or all of that is true, now what? And they're going to say, what do you mean, now what? Well, given that that's all true, and we want to fix it, now what? And well, what do you mean? Well, what can we do together? And what can we do for you, so you don't have to go through this again with us? So, is this? Are you following all this? Uh, yes. yes, I'm like hanging on every word. <laughs> this is amazing stuff. Is. I'm curious, in negotiation, hostage negotiations, or de-escalating a situation, mm-hmm. do you deal with men versus women differently, or is it all the same? Uh well, it's pretty much the same, but I think you bring up an interesting topic and, uh, because often when I speak to entrepreneurs, mm-hmm. uh, CEOs, and sometimes this can be a, a female entrepreneur, but often uh, people who are successful and good, and good problem solvers, what drives them crazy is people who don't want solutions or advice. Mm-hmm. So sometimes that can be the, you know, the, the, you know, the calm, logical uh, woman who has the crazy-making uh, husband or employee, or it can be the calm you know, rational man who has the crazy-making woman he's dealing with. Right. So, so here are some tips. If you're hanging on every word, this is going to be the best. Yes. Uh, there's two ways that people process stuff coming at them. The sort of masculine analytic way, those are people who think and do, and you can't get them to feel anything. You know, mm-hmm. so a lot of left-brain analytic solution people, they think, then they do. But if you ask them what they're feeling, it goes sideways. And then on the other side, there are the people who feel and do, and you can't get them to think. And it doesn't mean that they're, they're bad, uh, either one, because people who feel, do, but don't think, they often have a great sixth sense. Like my wife, fortunately, can do both of those, uh, but she's more of a feel, do person. But she gives, she gives me a home. I give her a house. She can hear a sound three rooms away, and she knows exactly what the kid is doing, whereas I'd have to shadow the kid. So we, we need both of that. So here's the deal. If you're in a conflict with someone and it's escalating, you say to yourself, uh, red flag conflict, and, and ask yourself, uh, am I involved with think-do versus feel-do or feel-do versus think-do? Which one? Mm-hmm. If you're a think-do person, which a lot of the entrepreneurs are, what you say to the other person uh, but, and, and you know, let's say it's your wife or uh, an employee. Feel do people are comfortable saying the word hate. Think do people aren't. I mean, think do people tend to be a little emotionally constipated. Mm-hmm. And, uh, 
Uh, and so if you're a think-do person, you say to the feel-do person, uh, you let them vent, uh, and then you look them straight in the eye, and you're going to lean in because you're going to have a method to this that I'm just giving you, and you lean in, and, and you'd say to them, so if I'm dealing with a person like that, I'd say, say, uh, say uh, you, you say it in this tone, I think I have a way to get us out of this. So you say it in a, in a very calm, let's make this better, but I think I have a way to get uh, out of this. Play along with me. And they'll go, what? Yeah, just play along with me. And then you say, look me in the eye, and I want you to say this. Mark, I hate it when you play shrink with me. I hate it when you give me all this advice and solutions. You're talking down to me. It makes me crazy. And what's going to happen is that feel the person is going to start giggling. And they're going to start giggling because you've enabled them to say things that if they said on their own, you'd get defensive about Mm-hmm. So what you're doing is you're leaning in, you're understanding the uh, the conversation, and you're giving them the words that they can't express because otherwise it would make you escalate. And we call that mediated catharsis. You're mediating their getting stuff off their chest. Now, if you're a feel-do person with a think-do person, you can, and you're going to laugh at this. If you're a feel-do person you, and you can stop yourself for a second saying conflict, 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 uh, and you pause and you look at the think do person and say, uh, wait, hold on a minute. Uh, I have a way out of this. Now, the think do person doesn't even care. They, they, they're just smiling that you stopped. Mm-hmm. But if you want to help a think do person who can be a little emotionally constipated to get some of that constipation out and they will feel better, uh, if you're a feel do person, you look at the think do person and, and you say, right in the eye, look at them in their eyes and say, say this to me. So let's say my name is. Uh, uh, say my name is uh, Stacy. Mm-hmm. Well, I'll look at uh, the think do person, and I'll say, say this to me, uh, uh, Stacy. When you get emotional and you go to left field, I get so frustrated. I don't know what to do. And the think do person is going to say, what? Yeah, just lean into it. Say, Stacy. When you get all emotional and you escalate, I feel like pulling my hair out. I don't know what to do. Mm-hmm. And what's going to happen? It's helpful because you've given that emotionally constipated way, uh, person a way to get rid of their constipation. And even they're going to smile because you've given them a way to confront you that, that if they did it on their own and, and you weren't in such control of yourself, you know, you would go ballistic. So is all this making sense? Yes. Today? Yes. All amazing stuff. And unfortunately, that was like the fastest 15 <laughs> minutes ever. And really uh, our time is up. I want to make sure people can find Mark. His website is Mark Goulston, G-O-U-L-S-T-O-N.com, MarkGoulston.com. His books are Just Listen and Talking to Crazy. And make sure you check those out and download them on Kindle this month for some big discounts. Thank you for joining us today, Mark. Oh, thank you. And you can reach me at Twitter, uh, at Mark Goulston. I think I have 76,000 followers. Awesome. And, and you guys send me stuff to tweet out, and I'll be happy to do that for you guys. Absolutely. We'd love to have you back on the show again, Mark. Thanks for being on with us. Thank you. That's, all for, this, that's all for this edition of Get Real. Join us again next weekend for more.